From Pee-wee to Dumbo and everything in between, join us every Thursday in April for Filmography Tim Burton. Our five-part season will break down all 19 of Burton's feature-length films to date in detail. Follow Filmography on Spotify or wherever else you find your podcasts. Consequence Podcast Network. Hey, welcome to another edition of Kyle Meredith with. It's an audio interview series presented by WFPK Independent Louisville at WFPK.org, Consequence of Sound, and the Consequence Podcast Network. I'm Kyle Meredith. If you're not already a subscriber of the podcast, uh, please take a moment before we even get into this right now. So you can follow along. Interviews get released every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday over at Consequence of Sound and would love to keep you up to date on all of those. Of course, you can subscribe anywhere you get your favorite podcast from, whether that's uh, uh, Apple Podcasts or iTunes. You can even subscribe on Spotify and YouTube as well. So my guest today, Tom McFarlane of the band Jungle. They've just released their uh, second album, Forever. It's two words, Forever. Not only do I get to dig into the album with Tom, but uh, as we're doing this interview, He's getting a tattoo. He's in the tattoo chair getting a tattoo, and you're going to hear about that more, too. But we'll talk about what life was like after getting sudden, very quick success right out of the gate for them on their first album. And there's also a story about moving to America. In fact, not just America. Uh, they went to the West Coast. Palm trees, sunshine, very different from the environment that they came from in the U.K. And being a part of that and experiencing the society that was going on politically in America, but also the darker side that maybe they hadn't considered beforehand when thinking about the American dream, like homelessness and materialism and isolation. We get into all of that with this record. On the lighter side, on the more fun side, we're also going to talk about some of the amazing choreography that exists in their music videos, being a part of the uh, FIFA soccer games, and so much more, especially tattoos. Lots of tattoo talk. All right, some tattoo talk. <laughs> it's Kyle Meredith with Jungle. Hey, man, how you doing? I'm well, how are you? Um, but you've caught me in quite a weird situation. I'm in the middle of getting a tattoo at the moment, oh. which is quite exciting. <laughs> that's fun. I mean, that's that's sort of fun for me. I don't know if that's going to be fun for you, but uh, but I suppose we'll see. <laughs> oh, wait, wait. Can, can I ask a few a few things about that? Like, what are you getting and where? Uh, I'm getting uh, my first ever jungle tattoo, actually, as we speak. Oh, so like of the logo? No, no. Well, it's just like just written. It's like just in a kind of like prison style, just on my forearm. So yeah, should be exciting. All right. I'm in Toronto right now, so. Well, I appreciate you doing this, and uh, and and this should be interesting either way around. It so it's uh, it's good to talk to you. Maybe it will be a nice distraction. <laughs> <laughs> Well, hey, man, congratulations on the on the Forever record. It's really been a really fun listen uh, and, and all the success that's came along with this. This is, a, this is great for you all. Thank you. Um, yeah, we're really excited. It's, like, it's, it's taken us by surprise, really, which has been good. I do, you know, so we'll back up a little bit because, you know, before this record, and, and really, you know, after that first one, I mean, it all seemed to happen so fast during the first singles and albums. So with four years in between, I mean, was there a desire to, to take stock, to take back the reins? I mean, did it ever feel out of control for you all? I don't I think because you're like in the middle of it, you, you don't really have the perspective. It's just this kind of like constant, like what's happening next, what's happening tomorrow, something new's coming, something else is happening. It doesn't, you don't really ever get a chance to like take stock of it, I guess, in that sort of sense, if you know what I mean. But if you look back, if I was looking back on the, the journey up until kind of the end of the tour in that first record, yeah, like if you look back on it now with that hindsight, it was a whirlwind and it was crazy. And I think all the things that happened to us were really wonderfully <laughs> unexpected in that way. Um, and so, you know, I think we took a little bit of time out at the end of that cycle just to kind of breathe a little bit and sort of go, wow, like what, what happened there? What was what went on it was just pretty pretty mad in that time you know you just rush away from the music industry altogether you try you try to live life like regular life um you try to it's obviously very it's quite difficult to, to readjust but i guess ultimately you know you've got to have those experiences i think that's what we kind of worked out was it was all very well coming straight back off the road and getting into the studio but actually that gave you really nothing to that gave you no experiences to kind of it, talk about i guess and so we just sort of went okay let's let's not do this for a little bit and and gain that sort of emotional material that helps us make this second record as i read you know two of the big parts of this record one of those at least is you moved to the u.s and that ended up being sort of part of the writing uh, and if that's right what drew you here what made you want to come over here to live 
Well, I mean, uh, Jay fell in love with a girl from LA, and so he moved over for like one of the summer in, I guess, like 2016. Uh, lived with her. And I came over, and I was in the studio with him a couple of times. And LA is a very romantic place for an English creative person, I think. We're kind of shown so much of it in in media, you know, music, film, music videos, uh, literature. It's a very you know, Hollywood is a very romantic place. For anyone who's creative, you know, the sky is amazing. There are too many palm trees. It doesn't. Make, it's like a bit of a joke. Um, <laughs> So I think you're naturally drawn there because of those things, and and yeah, like America is just yeah, it's just fascinating, and it's been an absolute like privilege to be able to to come and um, ah, sorry, hang on, <laughs> she's really getting going now. <laughs> this is probably a new experience for you as well as it is for me. Oh, this is this is a lot of fun. I, I mean, all I can do is imagine what's happening to you, right? I, I have no tattoos. I have zero tattoos on my body. So honestly, I, I don't even have a. A place of reference. <laughs> this, is only my, this is only my second ever one. Here's the closest I can get. Me trying to figure out what it feels like to have a tattoo is you, or or, or you know you and Jay thinking about what America is before you got here. That's I think that's a, it's just sort exactly. of a yeah yeah yeah. yeah. <laughs> maybe I kind of get the drift. But you know it's what a time to move to America because even with the romance of the West Coast and, and the actual weather that you know seems to constantly I- exist on that side of the country. I, it, you know, it, mm-hmm. it is political upheaval, you know, both in the UK, but especially in, in, in here as well. Uh, did that play into it at all for you all? Were, were you swept up into that side of things? Obviously, we're very socially minded, socially conscious people. I think that just came from our upbringing in, in the UK and how diverse our culture is over there. So you think about it, you try not to let it bring you down. I mean, all the stuff that's going on with the UK and Europe at the moment is just... Uh, it's not great and you just got to kind of stay positive and keep making music because at the end of the day there are, there are loads of people that still want to kind of have that connection with you and you've got to sort of forget politics a little bit I guess but at the same time you, you are talking about some heavier themes um, you know take that first single Happy Man mm-hmm. I mean there's a there's a, a materialism mm-hmm. you know slant to that and I think uh, I believe isolation is another theme which is interestingly time mm-hmm. because the more and more I talk to artists, especially that are putting out music in the past year, that sort of rears its head a lot. Isolation comes through a lot. Like, I, I know we're all weird bunches, you know, historically anyway, but it seems to be a, a little bit more uh, at this time. I, I mean, like, isolation is the worst possible scenario. Do you know what I mean? Everyone's got to stick together. That's kind of where, where we come from. But uh, it, it, well, then to go on to, to the other side of that, I mean, and I don't know which one of you all, you know, sort of threw the words down on Happy Man here, but, you know, materialism being the other thing, there you are all on the West Coast, and I feel like it's a lesson we would have learned by now, but uh, <laughs> what was smacking you all in the face to kind of throw it down on the record? I don't know. I think that song comes from a, a, there's a, there's a couple of different perspectives. I think there's also the, the whole notion of that, you know, obviously male toxic masculinity is, is a big issue these days and, and the whole idea of what it is to be a man and a good man, not necessarily in terms of, you know, wealth, just in terms of actually like, you know, in terms of society and making sure that you're being a good person, not because of how society teaches you to be a good person, but, you know, doing it properly. And, and the whole materialism thing is, is difficult because obviously America is sort of like the, the hotbed of capitalism and it, it is capitalism kind of defined and it's exciting to go and it's trying, I think for us it was exciting to see if that was still kind of the case and if the American dream was still a reality but you know even since we've been back on the tour in the US you know I've definitely noticed a lot more poverty a lot more homelessness even in even on the west coast you know you go to San Francisco and and places on the west coast like Santa Cruz and the problem's worse than ever so it's sad you know but I think coming over and and doing a bit of writing and some work out here before going back to the UK really gave us even more perspective on that and kind of showed us that you know the world is is still pretty broken and and, and that it's going to take a lot for, for us to fix it. There, there, there are moments on this record musically that I feel kind of match what you're saying there too because you know, take another track with House in L.A., you know, it sound, feels like musically you all really got to stretch out on that one, but the way it all melts away in the end, I think it's one of my favorite moments on the record. Yeah, I think that song for us was a real kind of, it was a redefining really moment. It was one of the first songs on the record that we finished that had that depth and that breadth of production and we were like, whoa, we, that was something that we didn't necessarily think that we were capable of and that's a really nice moment in music or anything creative 
is, is when you create something that you kind of stand back and you go, well, did, did I do that? Was that me? And so that was a really fascinating experience. You know, we really enjoyed that. Uh, I want to bring up the videos too, because, you know, there's choreography in the videos like last time. But I, I, I wonder, is there a, would you say there's a style thread that runs throughout? I mean, something that maybe separates these from the first album? Yeah, I think on the second record with the choreography, we tried to keep it more coming from the same place, like keeping a lot of cast characters the same, um, trying to create a storyline that ran through the videos, because obviously there's more of a storyline that runs through the record this time. Um, you know, th this album is definitely more about our emotions and our experiences. And so to, we sort of wanted to characterize those in a more consistent way throughout the making of the videos. And we used one, we used a choreographer for the same choreographer for all the videos rather than different choreographers. And so, yeah, there are definitely some thematic things that run through the whole the whole plot line, and I think that's something that we definitely sought out to achieve. Now, now, as for you, when it comes to choreography, it, do you know the lexicon? Is that in your wheelhouse, or do you have to give up a certain amount of uh, creative trust when talking to a choreographer about that? A bit of both. I mean, interestingly, my um, my mum is a dance teacher, and so she I, I danced when I was a kid. So I'm not like I'm not an alien to it. But I mean, at the same time, you've got to trust your friends to do their job to better than you think you're going to do it for them. And so, and that's part of the collective mentality. You know, we've got an amazingly talented group of people that we work with in in all aspects of what we do, whether it's on stage or with the artwork or the videos. And so you just got to go, like, do your thing. And I think that's the great thing is to watch your song come to life in a way that you can possibly have conceived. Well, some of my favorite videos out there right now, I, I, I just kind of get lost in them kind of watching them every time. They're so impressive. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> you also had a couple of uh, songs uh, recently on the uh, with, with the uh, the FIFA games. How, mm -hmm. I don't know, has that been important to your career? Do you think that's added to a level of success? I think so. I think any exposure is good exposure. Um, you know, that, that's just one of the biggest selling game titles worldwide on a yearly basis. And so to have your music on there, I mean, A, we're massive soccer fans, like huge. So we play the game with like, you know, I, I got season tickets to my local team in the UK so that's a bit of a it was a bit of a milestone in my head really <laughs> uh, but yeah it's a huge exposure and you, and you just notice that you know we met some uh, some really cool guys outside on one of our shows in Brooklyn last year who had kind of found us through the game they were like yeah we heard just on FIFA and then we got like, really into the band and they were and they were the kind of guys that we were, I wouldn't have expected to be into my kind of music and, and that was a really beautiful thing to show that there is a platform for you know people from all walks of life to listen to all different types of music music and, and to get involved in it because there was so much choice out there and it's it was just kind of crazy that these guys kind of picked us out of the bag and, and followed us from there but those great moments that we have when uh you know the things you grew up worshiping to a point you're suddenly a part of in some degree i mean that's 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 got to be you know one of those great moments as you as you say yeah it really is well, uh, Tom, I, I really appreciate uh, you know the conversation. Thanks again for uh, for the music and everything, and and for an album like Forever, <laughs> which you. which you got to put that pause in, right? Forever, it's it's almost like a toast, I guess. A little bit, yeah. It just, it, I think it just presents the word differently. It, you know, there's there's a variety of different meanings for us for the title, but um, <clears throat> I think yeah, it adds more emphasis. Yeah, it, it's it's a very special word. Well two couple of words for us I guess and it, it means a lot and you know we're really grateful that you know especially in America people have picked up the new album and, and really taken it under their wing and made it their own and we've seen that across the board you know playing live from, from coast to coast so we're just really grateful that the American people are really digging it right now. Absolutely so before I get out I obviously got to ask uh, where are you on the tattoo I mean what progress have we made in this 14 minutes? Well it was it was a uh, it was it was a proper like prison style hip and poke. So it was all, all the all the main action was done during the first couple of questions. Actually, <laughs> <laughs> I can't wait to to see it. You but, know, um, if you want, I'll, if you want, I'll send. Well, I'll put it up on the Instagram, and, uh, and you can go you can go take a look. <laughs> <laughs> I, I mean, I have to now. I just. It's not like I can't. I was I was even a part of it, just a just a half a little bit. So yeah, you were you were a part of it. Thank you, thank you for being with me during this journey. <laughs> Absolutely. Thanks for including me on the journey too, Tom. It's been a pleasure talking to you today. Thanks, man. Take care of yourself. All right. Take care. Bye. All right. Bye. Big thanks to Tom McFarlane right there from the band Jungle. The latest album is called Four. Ever. Hey, before I get out of here, uh, do me a good favor. Make sure you've hit that subscribe button. Hopefully you enjoyed this enough. Again, we put out the interviews every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday at Consequence of Sound. You can follow along uh, iTunes, Apple Podcasts, YouTube, Spotify, wherever you get your favorite podcasts from. Also, head over to WFPK.org. 
That's where I do a show every Monday through Thursday from noon to 3 Eastern. You can also find some bonus episodes of this series over there. Consequenceofsound.net. They've got everything that you could ever want with music and film news. And you can find me at Twitter at Kyle Meredith and Facebook slash Kyle Meredith. That does it for another edition. I'm Kyle Meredith. I'll see you next time. Consequence Podcast Network.